Hi, my name is Bobby Jones and I'm with Support Small Businesses in Tampa, Florida. And I have the pleasure of being here for like three weeks to be a part of the Heritage Art Festival here in Atlanta, which I'm loving. We have fabulous, fabulous jewelry to art to all food, vendors. Um, it, it's such a fabulous array of talent and art here and I'm just really enjoying it. My name is Wycliffe Lincoln Bennett. Everyone calls me Link. The art you're looking at here is created by me. Uh, I started off primarily as a portrait artist. And two years into my 10 year, now 10 year career as an artist, I discovered fabric. So now I use fabric in all my work. Fabric either creates the image, drapes the image, or accents the image. Um, after discovering fabric, I realized I could use fabric the way other people use paint in the images. Um, so I'm now creating portraits out of fabric. Three years ago, I started to sculpt. The sculptures are either by cutting out wood or by literally sculpting pieces. The sculptures, of course, have fabric on them or part of them. Now, the best way to talk about the work going forward is to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so when I say that I'm a portrait artist, I'm literally taking a portrait photograph like this or working from a live model and turning it in, interpreting it in fabric. So you get that effect. And when you look at it, what you realize very quickly is that, yeah, it looks exactly like the image you're dealing with, except it's actually more interesting because my goal is to make the finished product more interesting than the source. I can do this from a live model or from a photograph. So this is what we're doing conceptually. And in this case, you can't even tell which is, which is the image and which is the photograph. This is actually the last piece that I've done, which I consider to be three-dimensional. Now, when you're photographing, it's kind of hard to see it unless you pan, come with me. When you pan across, you begin to realize it's not a two-dimensional image, it's actually a three-dimensional image, okay? And how it works is that I'm actually layering and sculpting. This particular piece is layering. So one layer is wood, one, one layer is paper, the next layer is paper, there's several layers of wood, and of course fabric over the surface to create the image. This again is the same concept. When you take a look at this, there's actually a piece of sculpture out there on the end of this work, and there are pieces of sculpture here. Come around with me. And when you look again into the background, what you realize is that there are five layers of wood. Some of them have been cut and shaped to make the mountains and the trees. You go beyond that and there's another level in here where the people are. And these people are all made of fabric. And again, this is a sculpture you saw before from the other perspective. And when you combine all of these things, when you look at it from a distance, especially if you're looking at it with your eyes rather than with a camera, you can actually see the depth in the work. It looks infinite. This is the first that you can walk into it. Now we're talking about the sculptures that, the sculptures that I'm doing. Um, uh, this particular sculpture here, this is Joelle. Uh, and Joelle is, is a product called Sculptimol that makes her, but her skin is fabric and she's covered with a polymer resin. Uh, you know, again, for me, she's stunning. Uh, the next piece I want to show you is Beverly. And Beverly was in the newspaper today, so you can, you can forgive her for being shy. She's not shy at all. Um, she's actually a, a family friend, my wife's best friend, who passed five years ago. And uh, this is just done in memory of her, this particular piece. Uh, this piece, again, is, is I'm combining things here. There are layers, fabric, polymer resins, and the goal is, again, is to create something that's wonderful and fascinating. But when you look at it close up, you can't tell what's going to happen in terms of it being three-dimensional. But when you step back, it becomes very three-dimensional. So that's essentially what my work is about. I'm trying to create images. I want to move you. I want you to see through my eyes. My goal is to change you emotionally when you look at my work. If I can make that connection with you, then I'm doing what I want to do. So we're going to talk about the uh, piece. They're appliques, fabric collage pieces. 
The pen is actually done by another artist who's here, Deborah Shedrick. And I get the pens from her and they really kind of inspire me to do some different kinds of pieces. Um, one that I did, I did six in that particular series and all of them used the pens that she has. Um, sometimes I do some appliques and put them on paper. I actually sew the pieces first and then I'm using some quotes like uh, Maya Angelou. I like that quote that if, if you don't like something, change it. If you cannot change it, change your attitude, but don't complain. So I think that's kind of a, a good piece as well. So I'm playing with some different work. Sometimes I paint on canvas and do the faces and incorporate them in uh, the appliques as well. Just a combination of things. I like to play with it. And you'll see some watercolors. You'll see some pastel drawings and um, the jewelry as well. So, but I'm glad to know that uh, you all are concerned about the high life in Atlanta. Okay, so. Um, things, safety pins. Uh, uh, this one is one of the first pieces I did and I put little seed beads on it. It has 900 and some pins. At one point I wanted 350 for that and people said, oh, too much. So I started making them smaller and doing different things with them. Put all of them up pins and I go to different bead shows where people do crocheting and knitting and add to it. Then there are always pieces with flair. I always like that concept. Overkill is the statement for the artist. So, also do some small pieces, soft sculptures, uh, note cards, so that if people still want art and their budget is small, you can still buy something. I don't know if the answer. Then I do. Uh, what is Does that? it take a standard refill? Uh, oh, we have special We have special I know where you are. Yeah, we can. <laughs> so, and then I do these beaded pins. My cousin started doing them. She wore readers, and so when she wore red readers, she wanted a red pen and blue. And once she had them and I saw them, I asked where she bought them. She said she made them. So, I brought some back and sold them all. And yeah. I said, let's make some more. And she's saying, I got a job. And I'm saying, let's make pens. And so both of us are making these now. That's what I'm saying. When you They're one of a kind. That's what I tell people. So. Look at them. I thought I'd do the little tutus for the little ballerinas and make them brown so that we know that I'm not going to do that. I got bags. Um, I used to teach at Atlanta Junior College, which is now Atlanta Metropolitan State College and we worked on a quarter system so every three months I taught something different which is really why I do so many different things I'm used to changing up you do enough of this and it's like okay I need a break okay let's do pastels okay let's do watercolor paintings and so I enjoy doing that